Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The Muslim Brotherhood continues to kill Christians in Egypt with your tax dollars. I also interview Samia Johnson, a Lebanese Christian woman who explains the difference between Christian martyrs and Muslim martyrs. Is there really a moderate version of Islam? Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. Our first story today comes from the Christian Post who reports more violence by the Muslim Brotherhood against Coptic Christians in Egypt. Violence in Egypt against Coptic Christians has continued despite the fall of former President Mohamed Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood. With believers still facing abductions and the government seizing their property, the Board of Inquiry in Cairo reported. The report, according to Fidesz News Agency, shows that Coptic Christians who make up close to 10% of the population are continuing to face endemic forms of violence and abuse in many parts of Egypt at the hands of the angry Muslim Brotherhood. The worrying scenario has been reconstructed in detail on the basis of meetings with community representatives, civil society organizations, and material provided which witness this phenomena of violence, Fidesz reported. Christians have been heavily targeted in Egypt following the fall of Morsi last July with Islamic extremists blaming Christians for supporting the protests that led to the change in government. Believers were killed and Christian churches, bookstores and orphanages were burned down in violent attacks. Here's a response by three United States senators, including Lamar Alexander, Bob Corker and Roy Blunt, who issued a written statement. And they said, quote, Egypt's Christian minority and their ability to worship are in danger. The situation warrants a clear US response. We are especially troubled by reports that Egyptian authorities have failed to respond to attacks on Christians and churches or hold perpetrators accountable. Let's pray. Would you pray with me? Let's pray from this scripture in Matthew chapter five. Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name. And Jesus, you taught us that it's not like the Old Testament where you said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But instead, Father, we as Christians are called to respond to evil with mercy and we turn the other cheek. Father, we pray that you give the Egyptians strength to do that very thing. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When I come back, an interview with Samia Johnson, a Lebanese Christian. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel, who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb, and that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief? You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right 
to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching PIJN News. You know, the philosophical or cultural battle between Christianity and Islam is not only playing out here in America, but for decades or centuries, really, it's been playing out in the Middle East, particularly in the nation of Lebanon. Today, I am joined by Samya Johnson, who is in America. She's in Ohio today via Skype, and she's also a native Christian from Lebanon, and she has experience in seeing firsthand the struggle between Christianity and Islam over in Lebanon. Welcome, Samia, to our program. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, now, can you begin with your testimony? You were born a Christian in Lebanon, and uh, what did you experience? I was born to a true Christian family in Lebanon and accepted Christ in Sunday school when I was young. But uh, at age seven, uh, back in 1975, the civil war in Lebanon started between Muslims and Christians, and I didn't know what was going on. But for the next 15 years, the civil war continued. Uh, the Lord saved me from death three times. Uh, I remember losing many of my friends in school and neighbors and living uh, in shelter shelters and underground for months, no water, no electricity, and that created hatred and fear towards Muslims in my heart. And this, the civil war began because Hezbollah, which is different than Hamas, but Hezbollah is a faction of Islam that is funded by Iran, and they began to rise up to try and take over and punish the Christians and seize the government. Is that how the civil war began? Actually, it uh, later became this way, but first the struggle was between the Palestinians uh, with the Muslims on one side. They wanted to take over the country with Yasser Arafat, if you remember, and Al-Fatah. Uh, and against the Christians who were like 70% of the population was a Christian before. But now it's sad to say after 30 years of war and struggle, only 30% of the population in Lebanon is Christian now. And the president there is Christian, but you say he is losing power? They have stripped him from any power. So it's just uh, having him there so that the Sunnis and the Shiites will not have a struggle against who will take over. So it's like a solution. So when you grew up, you became a Christian minister and you had a radio program. Talk about that. Well, uh, during high school and college years, uh, I was invited to be part of a Christian Arabic radio ministry uh, on shortwave radio. So I started receiving letters from listeners and they were mostly from Muslims in the Gulf, in North Africa, in the Middle East. And I was uh, shocked to be faced by my own hatred and my own fear uh, to Muslims. And that was the first time I had to face this. I always kept this hatred in a dark, dark, deep room uh, in my heart. Um, so for the first time, I saw them as people who are looking for the true God. They were praying, their prayers were not answered. They had hunger and thirst in their hearts to know the true God. And after I learned how to answer their questions and misconceptions about Christianity, and I saw many of them come to know the Lord as Jesus, uh, as Christ, uh, come to know the Lord as Savior, uh, the hatred and the fear melted from my heart. God replaced it with His agape love, and I know it's from Him, because up till now, since 1988, this love is still the same. Actually, it grows every day. Well, that is wonderful, and that is inspiring. Uh, what are some things that you say to Muslim women or even men? I know you and your husband, Mike, are evangelists. Now you're here in America, but uh, what is the message of the Bible or of Jesus Christ that you want to share with them? Actually, uh, when we talk with Muslims, we can feel and they say in their words in so many expressions how hopeless they are especially about the afterlife they have no guarantee whatsoever 
uh, of being uh, in paradise except if they die as martyrs so no matter how much good works they do every Muslim the Quran says pass has to pass through hell first and afterwards it's up to Allah to decide whether they go to paradise or stay in hell so there's so much fear and uncertainty uh, in the Muslims heart and we tell them about the eternal hope that Jesus offers and we tell them about the God of love who wants to be their father they don't know this at all and they've never heard that God could be a father to them so your ministry is calloflove.org and it sounds like you have a message of love that God loves them and he wants uh, better things for them a hopeful future Amen, amen. Muslims call to war, Muslims call to prayer, uh, but the message of Christ is calling uh, people to accept the love that has been presented to them. But also, I want to add that our ministry is calling uh, the church in America to love Muslims. I know it's very hard, but the key to this is to, to differentiate between Islam and Muslims. And Islam is the religion, it's the ideology, it's the adversary, and we are against that. But most Muslims who are the adherents of Islam, they are victims because they were born into this religion, and they tell them, in oppression and indoctrinate them to learn that you are born a Muslim, you die a Muslim, you cannot leave this faith. That's why if we start to looking uh, at Muslims through God's eyes, we can see that there is hope for them and millions of them are accepting, are accepting Christ in Islamic countries. Amen to that. We're gonna take a short break and when we come back, I'm gonna continue my interview with Samia Johnson we're gonna talk about what's happening in Egypt, and we're gonna talk about the book that she has, A Simple Truth. We'll be right back after this short break. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb, and that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief. You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again by my new friend, Samia Johnson, a Christian from Lebanon who is now in Ohio in the USA via Skype. Welcome back, Samia. Thank you, thank you for having me. So we were talking about your history, growing up as a Christian in Lebanon, living through the Civil War, having a radio outreach and ministering to Muslims, especially to women, and you, know, you your heart of anger melted with God's love for them. and. What is your ministry about today and why did you move to America and when did that happen? 
This happened back in 1999. We received our immigration papers, legal immigration papers, uh, through family. And we sought the Lord to see if he wants us to continue living in Egypt. My husband is from Egypt, and we've been ministering there for several years. But uh, when we first came and visited the USA, we could not believe the freedom that this country enjoys. You guys are living in... Uh, you know, in a very different atmosphere. We could not reach Muslim directly in Egypt or any other Arabic country. We would be put in prison. So all our ministry was under uh, cover and underground. And because we were called to reach Muslims, we said, if the Lord wants us to be here, then we want to continue this. And we were surprised uh, to see a different version of Islam in America. We were surprised to know that there are 25 hundred mosques in America, 10 to 12 million Muslims here. And the version of Islam they were presenting was so watered down, diluted. We've never heard of this version in our country. So we felt sure that God was calling us here to give back a little bit to America uh, because of all the missionaries America has sent in, to our countries back in the 18th and 19th century to revive Christianity, to build churches and schools and hospitals. And we feel we are missionaries in this country to expose the truth about Islam so that we can protect our children from the misconceptions of Islam that's presented here. But at the same time, this is not enough. Only exposing Islam will only help us harbor more hatred and anger into our hearts. And that is not what Jesus calls us to do. So we also have another side of our ministry, which is to equip Christians with the right tools to reach their Muslim neighbors. This is the only way, I believe, we can win war on terrorism, uh, on anyone who wants to destroy this country, is to tell them about the love of Jesus. Tell Amen. them how they now, can find faith and hope in him. Now you have experienced firsthand, you've seen war and you've seen terrorism, uh, but here in America we like to think, and maybe we're being foolish, oh no, there can be a moderate Islam that is nonviolent. Uh, can you explain the difference? Um, thank you for this question, because if you compare Christianity to Islam, for instance, the more uh, the Christian is devout, a true Christ follower, will love their enemies, would want to do good, uh, would want to reach others, to witness to them, to give of themselves. But in Islam, it's different. Uh, I would say that a cultural Muslim is a Muslim who is nominal, who doesn't understand their religion. That's why they accept what their leaders teach them and mostly what they teach them in America is Islam is peaceful you have to uh, reflect a peaceful Islam in uh, America because you don't live in an Islamic country but because I've read the Quran I've read the Hadith I've lived with Muslims I know that true Islam is the Islam that Muhammad taught about in the last 10 years of his life, which is the second uh, revelation, and it's uh, included in all throughout the Quran, and it is to um, convert every person to Islam, whether it's Jew or Christian or idol worshiper, and to expand Islam so that it becomes the religion and the ideology of the entire world. So, overseas in the Middle East, the the, the version of Islam that people actually follow is not a nominal, it's, it's actually a very violent version of Islam. Well, let me say this. Um, only 10% of the Muslims worldwide are Muslim extremists, are devout Muslims, because believe it or not, in our nature as humans, we don't want to kill others. We don't want to expand our religion by killing others and dominating uh, uh, the helpless. So a lot of Muslims are even better than their own religion and what they teach them. So you'll see Muslims just living a simple life, wanting just to raise their kids and have a better life. That's why I say this 90% of Muslims, because they don't read the Quran, they recite it in Arabic without understanding it, 
they don't know what true Islam is. They're just taking it as face, face value. And remember, Islam is not only a re religion, it's the culture, it's their way of life. So they just inherit it and practice it out of submission and oppression. Now we saw recently in Egypt, and your husband is from Egypt, that there was uh, sort of an effort at democracy when they voted for the Muslim Brotherhood, but then they changed the constitution to enforce Sharia law is the, is the constitution of Egypt and to oppress all of the Christians. So what happened there? There was a Christian uprising and revolt? Actually, the final uprise was not only by Christians, but by moderate nominal Muslims and atheists. Believe it or not, in Egypt these days, there's between two to three million atheists. There's approximately uh, six to eight Muslim converts to Christianity. So uh, this uprise, after the Muslim Brotherhood took over the uh, government and Muslims found out that they want to oppress them and make Egypt another Iran, they said, no, we don't want that. Muslims thought that uh, true Islam can work hand in hand with democracy. But the truth is, if a true Muslim wants to imply and apply Islam in government, it cannot be a democratic country. So now, when Muslim uh, moderates found out this, they rejected it and they said, we want a government without a religion impacting it in that way. Yes, and then sadly, when the Muslim Brotherhood were removed from power, they began oppressing and burning down churches and killing Christians in revenge and displaying their true colors. That's right. But the beautiful thing that's happening in Egypt is in spite of all this persecution, because the Christians there learned to be martyrs for Christ and to be witnesses, God has turned this upside down on the heads of Muslims. Millions of Muslims in Egypt are accepting Christ every year because they were shocked at how the Christians were reciprocating, where their churches were burned, where their sons were, were, uh, were being killed. They were saying, we love you, we love Egypt, and if our our churches and our sons are the sacrifice so that Egypt can become a free country, a democratic country, we're willing to pay the price. Muslims were shocked and uh, millions of them turned against the Muslim Brotherhood. That's why they were able to get rid of them in a way. And that is the story of Christ's love, that Christians, uh, when we say we are willing to be martyrs, it means we lay down our life to love our neighbor. And yes. when Muslims say they want to be martyrs, it means they kill themselves to kill their neighbor. So yes. there are two different ideas of martyrdom. That's a huge difference. A martyr in the original language in the Bible is the one who witnesses for Christ till it hurts, even till death. So we are witnessing to Jesus Christ in Egypt, in Lebanon, in Islamic countries. And I hope we will do this in America as well. We would be bold and courageous to witness to our neighbors, whether they're Muslims or not, and not worry about being ridiculed or even persecuted for Amen. the same price. Last question, and can you talk about your book, The Simple Truth, and how do people find this book? Yes, I'm excited about The Simple Truth. Let me show you how it looks. It's a, a small booklet, 60 pages, covering 60 topics, comparing what the Quran teaches and what the Bible teaches about these topics in bullet points, objective, factual, and there's references in the back. Uh, I wrote it with a younger generation in mind because all the books we have in the bookstores about Islam are thick, complicated ones, and a lot of people don't have time to read them. The Simple Truth, you can order it online from our website. It's only for $6 shipping included. And also it's available on Amazon as an ebook uh, uh, if you'd like to get it uh, as an ebook as well. That's right. And your website is calloflove.org. And you also have a store button. You can buy many books or resources there, calloflove.org. Our guest has been Samia Johnson. Thank you, thank you for coming on our show and talking about your experience uh, with Jesus Christ and in the Muslim culture. Thank you, brother, and thank you for what you are doing. And we all do this for the glory of God. Amen. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back.
This is PIJN News. Do you care about defending the Constitution? Sign a petition today to defend your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. You know, left-wing crazies go on these shooting sprees, but then the Democrats, like Joseph Biden, are using this as a pretext to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. Can you believe they literally want to publish the mental health records of military veterans so that they don't pass background checks so they can't exercise their rights when they come home? Senator Harry Reid, the leader, changed the filibuster rules. Why? So he could stack the courts with gun-grabbing judges. Here are three of President Obama's nominees, Pillard, Millett, and Wilkins, couldn't get confirmed, but now they're on the court and they're allowing the DC police to fingerprint all law-abiding gun owners? That's not right. Sign a petition today, defend your Second Amendment rights. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Thank you for watching PIJN News and our thanks again to Samya Johnson. Her website is calloflove.org and she has a brand new TV show on the NRB network so if you're watching this show, you can also find her show. Look on your DVR and make sure you set that to watch her show. Listen, uh, I need your help today to stay on the air, to bring you this broadcast. We have production cost. I don't take a dime of salary, but please visit PrayInJesusName.org or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's our toll free prayer line. If you want prayer, I will try to return your calls and pray with you. Call us toll free at 866-Obey-God but please give if you can. Jesus said in Luke chapter six, give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. For by the standard of measure that you give to others, it will be measured back to you in return. So thank you for being generous. Let's follow the words of Jesus and help us stay on the air. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. God bless you in Jesus name and we'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.